Good afternoon. It's the Saturday of Easter week, and we thought this afternoon, before we left Greenwich and moved on to Darien, where we shall be tomorrow, we would just record an evening prayer with you, a Saturday evening prayer for the Easter season. Welcome, wherever you are in the world, and uh, we hope that this peaceful service towards the end of the day will be a help to prepare for Sunday or even to be used on Sunday itself. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the deep waters of death, you brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. Through him, dark death has been destroyed, and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lips reflect his glory, and our lives repeat the endless song. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. At this point, our daily prayer prints an Easter hymn, which we'll read as a poem. Ye choirs of New Jerusalem, your sweetest notes employ. The paschal victory to him in strains of holy joy. How Judah's lion burst his chains and crushed the serpent's head and brought with him from death's domain the long imprisoned dead. Triumphant in his glory now, his scepter ruleth all. Earth, heaven and hell before him bow and at his footstool fall. While joyful thus his praise we sing, his mercy we implore into his palace bright to bring and keep us evermore. All glory to the Father be, all glory to the Son, all glory, Holy Ghost, to thee, while endless ages run. Alleluia. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 19. It's on page 673. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day pours out its song to another, and one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language, and their voices are not heard. <coughs> Yet their sound has gone out into all lands, and their words to the ends of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun, that comes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens and runs to the very end again, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, dripping from the honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught, 
and in keeping them there is great reward. For who can tell how often they offend? O oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent of great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A lesson from the Gospel of St. Luke, and I'm reading from chapter 24, and I am at verse 36. This is from the moment when the two from Emmaus have run back to Jerusalem, telling of what they saw and the fact that they recognized the Lord in the breaking of bread. <coughs> Verse 38, 36. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do you doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. Stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Another of the resurrection appearances, this time told by St. Luke. I think probably we're going to have to change from the morning room here because we have two friends that we're looking after while our friends here that we're guests of have gone off for lunch and so um, I think we'll move into the kitchen and join our other friends that we're meant to be taking care of and hope that they are beginning to uh, settle down in there but let's just see we'll take this with us I think too we'll take the the daffodils because they'll come in useful later when we're thinking about something else here in the kitchen so come through with me Here we are. Now, oh no, no, that's uh, not the sort of noise we want to hear. There we are. You better now we're here. Oh. So, let me introduce to you here with the cushion in her mouth, Marigold. And this one, this lovely one, <laughs> is Jezebel. 
and they're going to be, we hope, quite silent while we go on with our meditation. Sit down, Marigold. I may as well be talking to the table. <laughs> Notice that what Jesus says is something which we've heard him say before, that everything in the law and the prophets and the Psalms, he adds on this occasion, is to be fulfilled by the Christ. And so often the evangelists say this was to fulfill what was spoken of him in the law and the prophets, or the prophet Isaiah, or looking back to the verses of the Psalms, all of that has been fulfilled in what they have experienced. And Jesus is helping them understand it. I think we're going to have some trouble here. <laughs> and uh, at that point, um, the disciples are beginning to understand what being on an apostolic mission, giving the, the gospel, the good news to the people is going to mean. And it's going to mean that they themselves will be walking through the same dangers that Jesus himself has been through. Sit down now, Jezebel. So, we used to have someone who has gone to glory now, who used to say to me, why do we bother to read the Old Testament? Why not just the Gospel and the New Testament? But, <laughs> but of course, when we read this particular passage, we know that Jesus himself says that understanding about what is going on by fulfilling the law and the prophets, which he's come to do, actually means in terms of human life. So I think that the lesson is an important one, and Luke makes it well. He's the only one who adds the Psalms in this, but that happens importantly, because the Psalms are the hymn book of the Second Temple, and those hymns are the ones that Jesus himself would know. This is a day, April the 6th, when two anniversaries that I'd like to point out are kept. One of them is the death of the high Renaissance artist Raphael. He was one of the trinity of Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and Raphael himself. And he died at a very early age of 37, but not before he'd accomplished a great amount of paintings and architectural plannings. And for 12 years, he worked in Rome and was commissioned to do things. Now, two of his paintings I wanted to point out, and you can probably find them if you look up Raphael. One of them is called The Miraculous Draft of Fishes. And he's painted magnificently the, the time when Peter, having been amazed by the catch they had made, is there in the boat with Jesus. This is the Lucan telling of the story, when Peter says, depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. And Jesus says, come and follow me. From now on, you will be catching human beings for the gospel and the good news, not any longer fishing just for fish. <laughs> we'll, we'll carry on. This isn't a real fight going on. These are two sisters playing with each other, but uh, there's a bit more than sisterly love going on here. So the second of the, the, the pictures, that, the paintings that, that I wanted to point out, is a painting of the Transfiguration. It was a painting done in the year 1520, which was the year Raphael died, and uh, that painting was unfinished, but only slightly unfinished. It looks like the most amazing painting of completeness. Let's take this away from you. And that's better. Um, <laughs> better is disappointed that I got rid of the squeaker. <laughs> um, so this transfiguration painting 
is a, a painting which not only gives the story which we read yesterday from St. Mark's Gospel, or the day before from St. Mark's Gospel, because that showed the disciples, Peter and James and John, on the mountain with the dazzling whiteness of Jesus in front of him. It was the morning we had the snow, I remember that. And in Raphael's painting, there's much more than that. Yes, you see the wonder and the sort of um, sleepiness of the disciples, not knowing quite what to say, and Jesus himself with Moses and Elijah on each side. But it then shows you also the scene at the bottom of the mountain, which in the Transfiguration story shows the father of the epileptic boy attempting desperately to have his son brought to Jesus. And as he does so, uh, Jesus reappears from the mountainside and sees, he says, what's going on here? And the father says, I brought my son to be healed. He was an epileptic. And sometimes the, the, the epilepsy throws him into the fire. But your disciples could not, could not heal him. And Jesus then says, bring the boy to me. And in Raphael's painting, when you look at it, the agony of the father, the distress of the boy, is all too evident. And so you, you, you have the on the mountain top wonder, thoughts of heaven, and, and the fulfillment of prophecy with the disciples there. Below, the other disciples trying desperately to help the Father, but they have to have Jesus back amongst them. And there's a sense of Jesus saying, right, enough of mountaintop thoughts to those three who've come down. Let's deal with the problems of the world. These are much more the task of giving the good news of the gospel. And Raphael, in his colours, picks all of that out. It is the most beautiful painting, uh, and one that, that one longs to see. And then the other date, which happened on this day, the 6th of April, this time in 1843, is the date on which William Wordsworth became Poet Laureate. And he, in 43, became the Poet Laureate and began the enormous years right up to the death of Tennyson of the two of them holding that position, the two great poets of the Victorian age, 1843, um, Wordsworth. 1850, right up to 1892, I think, Tennyson, and, and the monumental works of poetry that they composed. But for me, Wordsworth, and especially at this time of year, is always connected with this particular flower, because going for a walk on the 15th of April, 1804, Wordsworth, with his sister Dorothy at Grasmere, came across a sight that took his breath away. And he gave us four verses, which many of you will know by heart. Some of the words I know by heart. It was certainly one we learned at school. But it has the beauty of springtime wrapped into it. And uh, the evocation of, of, of scenes which Raphael was able to produce with paint, Wordsworth was able to produce with words. So here is this poem. I wandered, lonely as a cloud, that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, toning their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not be but gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. 
and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. A springtime poem fit for Easter when those golden flowers are seen all along the roadside here as well as in the gardens and decorating the house on the table here. So let's say our Easter collect on this Saturday evening as we prepare for Sunday tomorrow. Low Sunday we call it, but really no Sunday can be low in Eastertide. And we look forward tomorrow to worshipping in the church of St Luke at Darien. Here's the Easter collect. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death, to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Let's hold silence a moment before we say the Our Father together and think of all those whom we know to need our prayers on this Saturday evening and those also who are unknown to us but are in our dangerous world struggling with distress or grief or serious sickness. So we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Well, I think the poetry has quiet our little friends down, although I think that Marigold has found another squeaky toy, haven't you? And her sister is just having a little snooze over there. But you're liking the warmth of the fire here, aren't you? And you're going to settle down. All quiet now as we prepare ourselves to travel to um, Darien uh, and worship tomorrow at St Luke's. So you can find that worship on the St Luke's Darien website and we can go on from there. But for, for the moment, have a good night yourself, uh, and uh, there we are. There's a biscuit, there's a biscuit for you. You're waking them up. <laughs> Unusual for us to be with dogs, not cats. But they're a lovely, lovely couple of dogs, aren't you?